Good afternoon. Hi, everyone. My name is Cindy Martinez. I am the Dean of Students here at KGI. I am pleased to be sitting here with one of our current students, Vidiana. Vidiana, can you begin by introducing yourself and your background? Hello. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, Dean Cindy, for the wonderful introduction. As you mentioned, my name is Vidiana Murillo. I am a first-year graduate student here at KGI. I'm enrolled in in the Masters of Human Genetics and Genomic Data Analytics, the MSGDA program. I'm very fortunate to be part of the first program nationwide of its kind, focusing on genomic data analytics. I'm one of seven in my cohort, and I must say that I am very, very fortunate to have an exceptional program coordinator, as well as an exceptional cohort to share this experience with. A little bit about my background. So I did grow up here in the neighboring city of Pomona. I am one of four children. I'm the oldest of four, actually. And my parents are two amazing individuals that have always encouraged um, higher education, uh, exceptional work ethic, and taking advantage of great opportunities. But I am, like I mentioned, I am a first generation student. I'm um, a Latina scientist. I do have a background as a clinical molecular biologist scientist. Well, we're very happy to have you as a student, Vidi. So how did you initially become interested in science or in healthcare? So I initially became interested in both science and healthcare, actually healthcare first, then science. Um, I became interested in healthcare very early on when one of my cousins, who I'm very close with, was diagnosed with a rare and undiagnosed um, condition. Her diagnostic odyssey um, I was very involved with being that I was involved in a lot of the medical visits, a lot of the translating, a lot of reading the documents, a lot of seeing what genetic tests or all kinds of tests were being performed. And so when I went on to pursue my undergraduate studies, I was fortunate enough to have the opportunity to do research in one of the undergraduate labs. And so there I got involved. Um, my hope was to find not a cure per se, but to discover the underlying mechanisms for a disease like hers and for a disease and mechanisms that would help other um, people in her situation and that of my family. And so I was able to do um, conduct a semi-independent um, pro- research project. And that's where I kind of started um, being interested in the genetics part of it. And I realized that I really like science. I really like working in the lab but I didn't like necessarily working with mice. I wanted something more directly correlated to helping people and making an impact in the healthcare of others. And so I decided to then go into the diagnostic field. And so that's another long story that I might share some at another time. What type of activities are you involved in here at KGI? Here at KGI, I am a member of the Rare Disease Club, which is an organization that is recognized by the National Organization for Rare Disorders, also known as NORD. And um, as an organization, we support um, those that are affected by rare diseases through our Rare Disease Club education, advocacy, and research-focused um, programs and events. For example, um, I will be participating in the upcoming RDC Nord poster day. So I'll be presenting on a syndrome called Otahara syndrome, which is an early infantile epileptic encephalopathy. And so I'll be talking a little bit about what the disease, what it entails, the um, prevalence in the community, and basically just making it an educational experience for what Otahara syndrome is. Thank you. I look forward to seeing your poster presentation. So Vidi, can you describe an activity that you were not or may not have been able to participate in due to funding? I have been granted what I consider the opportunity of a lifetime. I was accepted to participate as a fellow in the first cohort for the Graduate Data Science Summer Program at the National Institutes of Health in Bethesda, Maryland. And so for me, this is a great opportunity that I personally, even though I applied and even though it's something I've always dreamed of in some capacity to be at the NIH, to participate in the NIH um, programs, 
I didn't really know if it would be a possibility. So sitting here today and sharing these news is both an emotional and very exciting time for me. But as you already know, Dean Cindy, this was this was something I struggled with at the beginning. I was very, very excited um, to be accepted into this program, to receive the news. And one of the first things I remember worrying about was, okay, so I'm accepted. Now, how am I going to pay for everything? How am I going to be able to afford housing? How am I going to be able to afford, you know, the flight there? How am I going to pay for everything that the cost of living entails? Because for me, even just being here at KGI and being able to pay a semester at a time um, for to be part of this MSGDA program, the first program nationwide, it has been a challenge. My family has undergone very difficult financial hardships. And so the excitement of being accepted for this program at the same time became, became something very difficult and something that I for some time thought that would be an opportunity that I would not be able to take advantage. And so for me, it's been something that I know I've had the support of KGI and I know that I will be able to participate, but all the details are yet to be figured out. Thank you for sharing that with us, Vidi. I know that that wasn't easy to talk about, but we are so proud of you for you have been given that amazing opportunity. Um, how are you working to help pay college expenses right now? In order to pay for my college expenses, I've had to resort to a number of resources. Initially, when I first started here, I developed a very extensive Excel sheet with a number of scholarship opportunities sorted by month. By the time they become available deadline, I went through our KGI um, Twitter account that listed the the scholarships. Um, I went through other sources. I contacted some mentors and people I've met along the way. I looked on the SOCNAS website. I just, I really tried every way to collect and compile these scholarship opportunities. And I, since before I even started, the moment I knew I got accepted, I started looking into these opportunities, applying for these scholarships. And I have also, um, in addition to that, regardless of the fact that my program highly discourages us working due to the Stranu's um, curriculum. We do have a lot of units. For example, this semester, I'm taking about 18 and a half units, if that's correct, 18 or 18 and a half. And so most of my days are spent studying, um, doing homework for my classes, preparing for my lectures, you know, being a student. So we hardly have time outside of that. But because of my situation, and I, I, I have to work. So I was given the opportunity to be a graduate student assistant. And it's been difficult. Um, in addition to that, um, I recently started taking up a hobby where I craft. And so I started um, making that publicly available. So, I'll, you know, I used to make my own gifts for people, customizing mugs. And so now I've made that, you know, available to other people who want custom mugs. And so I'll help do that as well. So it's been a number of things that helped me pay for college. VD, you are such a hard worker. I commend you for that. Can you please talk about how you would benefit from the Student Success Fund? Having the opportunity to benefit from the Student Success Fund would allow me to worry a little less because, I mean, I tend to worry just naturally. It's just who I am. But it would help me worry a little less in terms of if I had the funding through the student success fund to not have to worry about where I'm, how I'm going to pay for the, the rest of the housing at the NIH, how I'm going to get to the NIH, you know, in terms of travel and costs and other expenses, then I could spend more time focusing on my classes, on ensuring that I am successful, um, in excelling in my curriculum and what what it is like to be part of the MSGDA program. So I think that would be the first thing I would focus on because the NIH is upcoming. Um, 
But if I could benefit from that, having that support to get to the NIH, like um, some somebody here said, team getting VD to the NIH, that would be wonderful. But um, I feel like if I couldn't benefit in that way, I could also benefit in helping support my academic um, endeavors here at KGI. And lastly, if you could personally thank a donor who contributes to the Student Success Fund, what would you say? If I could personally thank a donor who has donated to to the Student Success Fund in order to help me and others like me, I would say thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your generosity. And most importantly, thank you for your contribution. Thank you for helping things like help allowing me to travel to the NIH to be able to take advantage of the mentorship of world-class researchers and leaders in the, in our field. I would say, you know, thank you so much. I, I actually can't find the words to thank you enough for making this possible um, and for continuing to support students like me and, and others, because I feel like a lot of the times being in my position, it's not only about me and the opportunities that I have, but knowing that there's others that look up to me, showing them that it is possible. And so you're helping me directly, but indirectly helping others in similar situations, showing them that it is possible and that despite the adversity, there are caring people. There are people who want to see us succeed and ensure our success. So thank you once again for making this possible because it takes a village. Thank you so much. To contribute to the KGI Student Success Fund, go to kgi.edu slash student success fund. Again, that's kgi.edu slash student success fund.